It's an issue begging for urgent attention, the financial autonomy of the judiciary. So much so that Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, Jusun, took matters into their hands when on April 6, they embarked on a nationwide strike, a strike which not only paralyzed the justice sector, but also resulted in extended prison remands for awaiting trial inmates, prison congestion, lengthier delays of court hearings suffered by litigants and lawyers, and of course the loss of pay for some lawyers. The Chief Justice of Nigeria and the leadership of the Nigerian Bar Association intervened and eventually the strike was called off on June 9. As long as the judiciary has to go cap in hand, begging, acting like a parastatal instead of an arm of government that should have its own budget, its own, you know, that's where we're going to be. Another issue which chilled the judiciary in 2021 and generated public outcry was the embarrassing and indiscriminate granting of conflicting court orders by some judges. Again, the CJN and the NBA intervened. In the end, the National Judicial Council barred three judges from promotion to a higher bench for a period of two to five years. An appropriate punishment would have been asking them to retire. The various panels set up by most of the states during the NSAS protests to investigate the alleged atrocities committed by men of the disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad submitted their reports in 2021. One low moment, however, was the controversy which chilled the report submitted by the Lagos State Judicial Panel, which probed the October 20, 2020 shooting of NSAS protesters at the Lekki Toll Gate. But perhaps the most controversial incident in the year 2021 was the invasion of the Abuja residence of the second most senior justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Mary Audily. What made the incident very controversial was that all security agencies in the country, including the Attorney General of the Federation, denied involvement. But following public backlash and the outcry from concerned stakeholders, the police launched an investigation which has now resulted in 15 suspects being arraigned in court. I must make it known to all and the Sunday that we have had rough dosage of such embarrassments and harassments of our judicial officers across the country. And we can no longer take any of such on the bright side, as part of measures to eliminate delays and decongest the correctional centers across the country, the Federal Ministry of Justice unveiled a technology for court reporting and a virtual court sitting facility at the Kuje Correctional Center in Abuja. In year 2021, the courts concluded major cases and handed down jail terms to a former federal lawmaker, Farouk Lawan, a former chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team, Abdul Rashid Mena, and his son, a former bank PHB boss, Francis Atuche, amongst others. It was a different story for Shaikh leader Ibrahim El Zagzaki, his wife Zina, and the former governor of Abia State, Oju Zokalu, as they got some reprieve from the courts. The courts also barred federal government owned marriage registries, except Ikoi and the Federal Capital Territory Abuja, from further contracting marriages under the Marriage Act of 2004. 2022 promises to be busy for the courts. Notable cases to look forward to include the trial of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, the trial of alleged serial kidnapper, Evans, the trial of Chidima Ojuku, the judicial dispute between some states and the federal government over the collection of the value-added tax, the suit by the attorneys general of the 36 states against the federal government over the alleged failure to remit funds generated from stamp duties into state accounts, the suits to compel the federal government to account for looted funds so far recovered since 2015, as well as judgment in the suit filed by the states on the funding of the judiciary. The expectation is that the judiciary in 2022 will deliver justice faster and fairly, as well as introduce reform that will show up its reputation and regain public trust and confidence. Shola Shieli, Channels Television News.
Right about now, our judiciary correspondent, Shola Shoyale, is here with me in the studio to take us through the, that report on the judiciary. So you've raised some issues, um, Shola, uh, concerning the judiciary in the year uh, 2021. What's your general um, assessment you know, concerning the sector last year? You know, Ayo, some of those issues that I raised in that report, they're not new issues. Issues of the financial autonomy of the judiciary, issues of corruption in the judiciary, issues of conflicting court orders, issues of um, political interference, high cost of litigation. These issues are not new issues. They are issues that have always plagued the judiciary year in, year out. And if you ask any average lawyer, we all know the problems. Any average lawyer will tell you that these are the same issues that confront the judiciary. I mean, we get invited to seminars and conferences and we talk about these issues. But what has happened is that we have not moved the conversation beyond just talking about it. We have not, you know, come up with critical reforms to deal with these issues that continue to plague the judiciary. And that's where we need to be going next. We need to look at critical reforms that will deal with these issues. And I know you're going to ask me what reforms yeah, I would like to suggest, we, because, exactly. because that, that's really the next level. I want to look at the regulatory bodies. That's talking about the National Judicial Council and the Nigerian Bar Association. And I'm glad that the president of the NBA will be our guest on the news at 10 tonight to talk a lot more about that. But for the National Judicial Council, I think that we need to think of, uh, we, we need to reconstitute the membership of the National Judicial Council. I mean, the members of the National Judicial Council, the CJN, heads of courts, they are judges who have been through the system, who have been part of the system. I'm not sure that that body can give us the kind of reforms that we need. We need a body that can handle issues of discipline timelessly. And so I'd like to see a reconstitution of the NJC to have more vibrant members come in there, lawyers, judges and the profession knows the lawyers and judges that have integrity um professors of law you know we need to have a vibrant mix that can give us the kind of reform so that we're not just talking about the same issues year in year out for the mba i'd like to see the mba do more to rein in its members in terms of discipline and because the NBA has been accused in the past of being slow to discipline its members, and whether we admit it or not, the, 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 the lawyers are the biggest beneficiaries of the rot in the system. So the NBA needs to do more in terms of discipline on its members. Then the welfare of judges, non-negotiable. We need to pay our judges better in 2022. The, the conditions under which they work, we have some of the best and brightest judges in the country. Only a few spoil the judiciary, mm. but we need to pay them better. Judicial staff workers, we need to rethink their welfare. We need to train and train them. And if anyone is found corrupt, let's show them the exit door timely. Most definitely. Shola Shoyali, our judiciary correspondent, thank you for your thoughts there and that report. Thank you. Ayo.